the consequences of black magic. Welcome. Uh, this is really a follow-up to my vlogs and personal reflections on black magic and carries on from the vlog Black Magic and How It Works. In this vlog I wanted to expand on some of the concepts I introduced, especially related to how black magic affects us and its consequences. Yes, it is a very personal view. Um, but it is based on my experience. So please listen to some personal reflections on black magic to understand my experience, as this vlog is much more philosophical. Dealing with black magic. It is widely believed that magic cannot affect the pure of heart and that spells were returned to the sender. Call it karma if you like. In fact, within Islam and Kajawan, there is the belief that magic cannot work unless the sender is pure of heart. In fact, an awful lot of Islamic magic um, actually uses uh, doas and texts from Al-Quran People take wudu, or the ablutions. People pray in a normal way. Uh, many of the rituals are the same rituals that all Muslims use because it's believed that it won't work unless they're pure. And that includes them not, not only not doing anything haram, but not earning a living from anything that's haram. To a lesser degree... Such views are also present within the Western tradition. You will come across it, but, but, but not as strongly. Now, I'm going to return somewhat to this later when I discuss the psychological theory of magic. But my own take on it is that it's related to our vibrations and the degree to which we can suppress the ego. Uh, so, thinking of the Pasugian spell that me and my family have suffered from, <coughs> where our blood has been offered in return for money, uh, the spell will work if our vibrations are lower than those of the sender. Indeed, there's very often in Kajawan and Islam uh, the concept that if the spell has worked, uh, then Allah wished it upon the sender, uh, uh, on the victim. Uh, because they were themselves not pure of heart. They were bad. So the sender is only doing the work of Allah, if you like. Whereas if our vibrations are high, it, it, it simply won't work. Although I need to say that it does exploit any weaknesses, any little chinks within us. Um, and certainly, even if we don't have those little chinks... And we tend to be aware of the spell having been sent. In fact, spells are often sent in combinations with the, the, the intention being to lower our vibrations. For example, spells aimed at giving us ailments, particularly painful ailments like gout or sciatica, uh, because of such painful ailments can weaken our spirit and that leads to a lowering of the vibration so that the main spell itself can work. Often in selecting us as a victim, the sender will have to offer themselves as an alternative, which really is where the idea of it being returned to the sender comes from. So in other words, if we're being sacrificed, they have equally to be prepared to sacrifice themselves. However, it's more about the sender having made some form of contract with whatever it is you think it is, the spirit, let's call it. And the understanding of the consequences of breaking this contract or the spell not working. Again, thinking of Pasugian, if the desire for wealth is driven by greed, it's, or personal greed, it's unlikely to work. Uh, but if the desire is simply to provide for one's immediate family, uh, then the power play between the victim's vibrations and the sender's vibrations 
is much more complicated. Now what this does mean is that our natural desire to fight black magic with black magic is the worst possible reaction. As retribution lowers our vibrations. Furthermore, we often have no idea of the power of the sender. So taking them on without that knowledge is like potentially fighting back against a prize fighter. You know, if, if the aggressor is so terribly powerful, you wouldn't rush into fighting back. No, I've learned that forgiveness, even understanding of the motivation by people who are using black magic en against us, and remember, people quite close to me have tried to kill me, is the best defence. In fact, in my working as a healer, love and compassion, I know, are the best approaches. A talisman verses from Al Quran, prayer, may all help to focus our will but again must be used with compassion and understanding. Uh, there's also a variety of protection techniques, including finding the spell and destroying it, which can help with this will. Certainly I'm not arguing against normal spiritual hygiene, such as laying down salt, avoiding alcohol and prayer. At times, the spells may have lowered our vibrations and to such a degree that we do need external help. But turning to another black, black magician only results in a black magic arms race, with only the arms dealers or the magi magicians, if you like, winning out. Again, as a healer, I help people when they're under attack. Although I know that only they can cure themselves by raising their vibration, they have to have confidence in me as a helper for them to do this. So when people believe that they are possessed, possessed by jinn, I actually interact with the jinn when removing it, even though deep down I see the problem as internal to their consciousness and not an external paranormal force. So this is the sort of subterfuge that I've talked about before. So even when working as a healer, I have to use a degree of subterfuge um, to convince the person I'm trying to heal that I know what I'm doing and it's the right thing that I'm doing. But actually, it's them who cure themselves based on me having convinced them. As I say, love and compassion work best. Uh, that's not to say that an exorcism or a rookie cannot work. Uh, but again, it's all about the relative powers of the vibrations. So if we believe that we can remove something through brute force, it's less likely to have a positive impact on the victim's vibrations. The consequences of black magic. Uh, Developing this idea that the spell may return to the sender is that the universe seeks balance mm. and takes the route of least resistance. That's why some people, myself included at times, describe this as karma. Um, it's not a judgment as people think of good and evil. Uh, but if the intended victim is without greed, jealousy, seeking revenge, uh, they will not be harmed, and most likely the sender will. Indeed, even if the victim is harmed, the imbalance in the universe is likely to result in an equal reaction to the sender, or certainly somewhere in the universe. So, you know, the Isaac Newton, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. This is taking it so much further. So many people who've used magic for all gaining wealth suffer from some form of personal tragedy. Often they lose a partner or lose a child or something like that. And this is simply about this balance. Having said all that, we also need to return to the concept of the contract with the spirit, the paranormal, whatever it is. If the sender has entered what they believe to be some form of Faustian pact, uh, then this is always self-fulfilling. 
In Kajawan, we believe that these last for up to seven generations of the sender's immediate family. So, so much that I deal with as a healer is intergenerational karma, which is to do with a contract either having been broken or not fulfilled, not worked. And this is passed on through the generations without people uh, being at all aware about what it is. Uh, so when people, particularly Salafis, say that you shouldn't use magic and that magic is very dangerous, uh, they, they do have a point. It's, it's, it revolves around this issue of, of contracts. Um, and if, you, if people are entering into some sort of a contract, then that contract is very important. Of course, I suppose it really depends on what the sender believes. If the sender doesn't believe they've entered a contract, then I don't suppose it matters. Um, uh, but even if they believe it in their deepest recesses of their con subconscious, it does matter. Because, you see, such beliefs have a habit of coming to the surface through fear of the consequences. And th this sets up a similar, if not identical, cycle to that of the original black magic, a cycle of fear that leads to physical and mental health problems. It's similar to older people regretting and being plagued by the actions of their youth. Indeed, as my family and I are beginning to overcome the black magic that has been sent to us, it's apparent to us that the senders are now trapped within their own cycle of fear, their own cycle of misery, because their shadow is so much greater than ours, so their fear is so much greater, and with it, its consequences. In fact, if they truly repented, Maybe they would have little to fear. Uh, but such are their egos and shadows uh, that this would completely elude them. So many of our leaders who seemed to have been so sure about what they did was for the public good in later life become racked with doubt and remorse. I, I mean, just listen to people like... Um, like Henry Kissinger or um, um, George Bush, you know, what some of the public statements they're making, that, coming out with now, suggest this massive remorse. A further twist to this is that some magicians seem to keep getting away with sending malevolence, never realising that they're creating this massive trap for themselves. The more successful they are, the more they use the magic, often with greater and greater consequences. But ultimately the penny drops, that they're only setting themselves up for an even greater malevolent reaction. The Psychological Theory of Magic so far, I've avoided explicitly discussing the th psychological theory of magic, uh, whilst attempting to leave the door open to introduce it, which I'm going to now. You see, I, I don't really believe that there are external entities or forces acting upon us in the ways that I've described, uh, but everything is created within our own consciousness. So as I say, when I remove a jinn from a person, I have to convince not only them but myself that I am actually removing a jinn from them, even though I really don't believe there are jinns. I believe it's something within their consciousness that I can help them with, a blockage if you like. And it's often useful to see it as a jinn or to see it as some sort of an entity. And I think the reason why I see things this way is that I really do believe that we co-create our reality with God. So we're constantly co-creating our reality and indeed the universe with God. Indeed, the creation that I spoke of in Black Magic and How It Works is an ongoing process. 
uh, you know, especially as I'm sceptical that time is a dimension or has any meaning other in, 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 than in how man develops accounting systems to support his own greed. So what I'm really saying is that um, because there is no time, the what we call creation, we're constantly doing. It's, it's, a, it's, it's an ongoing process. Creation is occurring right now, but of course there is no now because there is no time. Now, when I say that black magic exploits fear, in reality, we're only fearful of our own shadow or shadow self in the Jungian sense. Or what I mean here is that the evil we see in others is merely a mirror of our own evil, simply being reflected back towards us. The fear that they're going to do this, they're going to do that... Oh my God, I'm worried this is going to happen. It's simply because we know within our own shadow that we're capable of doing it. For if it wasn't there within our shadow, we wouldn't even think about it. That our attempts to control our universe, whether through science, business or magic, they only reflect our own fears and shadow. Why, why do we need to control the world if we're not fearful? If we truly trust God and trust in his bounty and trust in all that he can give to us, then we don't need to control things. And again, this is why suppressing the ego and moving to a higher vibration are so important, as opposed to seeking retribution. Whatever harm we seek for others, even in defence, only harms ourselves. As ultimately we're in all one, or at least we're certainly all entangled. Indeed, isn't the idea of the self simply an expression of the ego, which is perpetuated and to justify greed? But why and how have I reached these conclusions? Well, I began to realise that I could control my own reality and destiny through raising my vibrations. Now, I, I say I began to realise it, but it's something that certainly I used to do as a child without thinking about it. And I suspect many of us did if we're truthful. We probably now write it off as dreams and say, well, it couldn't possibly be true. But I think most of us did used to do it. It's only when we're told that it's impossible and we can't do it that we no longer can. Indeed, we gain control by giving it away and placing our destiny in the hands of God or the universe. So this is what I talk about in saying, in order to overcome our fears, in order to overcome our bad, our shadow, we just need to put our trust in God or, if you like, in the universe. Uh, but much more importantly, I began to understand that not only was magic and the paranormal a product of our consciousness, but so was what we call reality. So in other words, I'm perfectly prepared to accept that the paranormal and magic and magic are a product of our imagination, but then so too are the things that we think of as being very real. Objects as we see them are not objects, simply projections of the consciousness. I'm not asking you to jump with me into the non, this non-dualist expanse of nothingness, uh, but do ask you to take on board that there is nothing special about magic. It comes from the same place as everything else. So we can only look at the intentions and not the technology. If, however, you're willing to follow me, uh, then we no longer judge magic, even the darkest of ma black magic, as any different from physical acts of greed, violence, etc. This also adds weight to, to my conviction that if it's wrong to physically murder someone in the, and I put inverted commas around it, real world, uh, then it's equally wrong to do so using black magic, but no more so. Do you know when people put their little their hands up to show those 
those ex exclamation marks. Isn't it horrible? It is dreadful. I should have done that then. No. You wouldn't have seen it anyway, would you? <laughs> moreover, if we would not wish to kill someone, uh, moreover, if we would not wish to kill someone whom had attempted to kill us in this real world, uh, then ne neither should we send back or retaliate against blood spells. So many times in prayer I've offered myself to Allah, saying that if it is, is his will that black magic of others should kill me, then let it happen. I'm ready to meet him. It's always after doing so that I seem to make the greatest progress in combating magic. But let me tell you, this is not a tactic. No, it certainly isn't. It only works if you are totally genuine. At this point, I'll probably lose many of you. But it's worth saying, if only as a provocative ending, if black magic is all about exerting one's will over others using fear, what of what we call, and again these, in, these marks, the real world, isn't it all one giant control system keeping us enslaved through our fears? And if you follow this logic, you'll now understand why I shun definitions of magic. For either everything is magic, or nothing is. Well, I hope you've got something from this. I, I dare say it's challenged many of you. Uh, but I hope you understand, I've tried to be firm, I've tried, I mean, yes, some is conjecture, but I have tried to base this on what I can glean as being facts, and I've tried to be fair in presenting them. It's a part of the real magic of Java, which originally I thought would show rituals in Java, and would only be cut every two or three months. But what I decided to do was expand the concept to talk about things of interest, so now it's happening every two or three days. So if you have enjoyed this, or at least got something from it, if you can pass a comment and hit the like button, and if you've really enjoyed it, if you could subscribe to my channel, hit the bell and you'll get future notifications. And what I want to do is thank you so much in anticipation for that.